Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Woo! Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Run It Back here on FanDuel TV, guys. We have actual games tonight. Really, really good games. Are we excited? excited. Yeah, let's Overall do it. Overall excitement wait. levels. Are, are you about. throwing a party at your house for a big watch? Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay, yeah, totally. We'll be there. <laughs> um, and Stadium Insider, Sean Sharanya, Chandler P., Lou Will. My name is Michelle. I decided to wear the brightest color that exists today on the show. Why not? Make everyone happy. We're going to start with Lakers at Pelicans. Man, they've been out in New Orleans for a minute. This one's at 7.30 Eastern. Uh, a lot of Lakers fans yesterday with sure. some theories on what they should do. Uh, ESPN's Mike Greenberg, Greeny, said the Lakers should sit LeBron and AD. Um, you know, <laughs> these are theories, these are strategies that we're thinking, but it's all to avoid facing They're just picking the fights to channel yeah, at this your point. Boy yeah, Greedy, like, your boy Greedy's yeah. back at it again. Apologize. Shout is out it to that Greedy. crazy, though, to think about trying to avoid the Nuggets? Yeah, it is. Why is it? Because why? you're going to have to go through them anyway, so why mess with the basketball gods? Why? You're not good enough, first of all, to sit here and rest oh. this game and then have to go and then beat the Warriors or the Kings. Not like that's a layup anyway. It's not like it's the Eastern Conference where they possibly have the Bulls or the Hawks. No matter what mm. happens in this game, Sure, would it be a more favorable matchup if that happened to work out where they just organically lost the game tonight and then they won against the Kings or the Warriors and then drew the Thunder instead of the Nuggets? Yes, I think that would make more sense. I think they'd have a better chance to win that series. But you can't risk in a one-game all-or-nothing to sit your guys or to you know load-manage them when they're fully healthy just to get the chance at possibly having a more favorable matchup. You cannot do that. That is... Bonkers. Yeah, it's not like this is a seven-game series where they got a bunch of games where they can have opportunities to get over that hump. All the gimmicks and all of that, playing chess and mm. trying to put yourself in a position to have the right seed, those games are done. At this point, the best basketball teams are going to win the games. Simple as that. So should they win a, lose a game on purpose at this point? Absolutely not. It's a reason... All of these teams are in the position that they're in in this play-in tournament. You don't mess with the game. You don't mess with the right. basketball game. Yeah, go up. I agree with the odds. If they were good enough to do this, they would have done this earlier, not when it's a one-game, basically March Madness elimination where your whole season's on the line. You, you just absolutely cannot do that. You have to win this game, and then you have to take your chance against the Nuggets. And, oh, it's and, a chance. You know what I mean? Like that, but that's what you have to do. You can't just let it come down to one game because then anything could happen. Then you could be in Cabo next week instead of playing the Nuggets. And how stupid but would you feel? Isn't it daunting? First of all, you think, okay, the Nuggets swept them in the conference finals. Boom. They also beat them in all three games this season. Boom. So, yeah, you go in there tonight. You play this game. But is that not sitting on top of your mind the entire entirety of this game that, okay, we win this. This is our prize. I mean, yeah. You, you, go, into a feeling, you go into a feeling like that and just making sure you, you go win the basketball game. But I'm, I'm laughing because it's saying – the internet yesterday was filled with Laker fans that were, were down for them trying to lose on purpose. It's like, that doesn't sound like the Laker faithful to me. Mm. I'm, yeah, that doesn't sound like a, the Lakers attitude. I've, I've worn that uniform before. They want to win at all costs, win everything. They've never learned, they've never tried to lose anything on purpose. So yeah. I'm calling BS on that. Yeah, and again, it does, it, out loud, when you say it, sure, they would rather the Oklahoma yeah. City Thunder because of their inexperience, because they have never been there before, because of how youthful they are. Yeah, that makes more sense. But they're not in the position to do this. And we can't just act like they're this team that can flip the switch. Okay, we're going to lose this game, win get this game. Or they would not be in this dogfight of the play-in tournament that Fair. they are in. So that makes no sense. It's too risky to do. Do you think the Nuggets right now are sitting at home going, we would rather play blank? I mean, I don't think they care. I think they think I they're going to... I don't think they care, but if I'm, if I'm going to take a shot at guessing, <clears throat> they would like the Pelicans to win this game. I mean, what team would want to play against the best basketball player in the world? No matter what phase of his career that he's in, you don't want to match up with the best basketball player in the world. Simple as that. Yeah, if I'm on the Nuggets, I want... New Orleans, just because of that reason, I don't want to play against LeBron James, Anthony Davis for possibly seven games. I don't want to go Laker Nations everywhere. There's going to be Laker fans tonight in New Orleans. There's going to be Laker fans oh, no, listen. in Denver. Like it is damn near going to be a have home a presence game. in New yeah, Orleans. It's going to be a home game tonight. So I will say the Lakers, I think, have a huge listen, advantage listen, in that. For the the Lakers fans, they travel regular season games. A game that means so much right now, I guarantee you it's going to be uncomfortable for the Are New Orleans Are those not Pelicans. just bandwagon people in different no, cities that have Lakers? But it doesn't, they're still loud. They're still team. there. I'm just making sure I understand what the rules are. It's, it's Amer it's Amer <laughs> the Lakers are America's team. It, mm. it's one of, if, you're, if you're a home team, it's one of the most annoying things to go through. For sure. Is run out of your tunnel on your home court and get booed by a bunch of Lakers fans. In New Orleans. <laughs> it's one of the most annoying <laughs> things you can ever go through. Historically, New Orleans doesn't have this crazy home court. They don't have a crazy, first crazy place, fan base you know like that. So yeah. it's not like their fans are going to be outrageous and put them over the top. There's probably going to be 
louder Laker fans in there than Pelican. Fans. They're getting a lot of motivation this morning. No, they, they have motivation. Yeah, right. A lot of motivation. Yeah. Hopefully, they're they're in tune, Chandler. But I understand what you're saying. They don't have this 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 rich history of it's not like you going to a fan Portland like or going that. to Boston where these crazy atmospheres. Yeah, it's gonna be a I, normal game for LeBron. Though. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but they they are motivated. They will be there. Shout out to New Orleans. Shout out Smoothie King. You get a smoothie when you go there as a member of the media, <laughs> and a uh, big fan of that. Shams, um, the AD of it all. I, I know injury reports and all that. Or is there is there a world in which we don't see him tonight? I don't see a scenario where Anthony Davis doesn't play. He himself came out after the game uh, on Sunday and said, he, there's no doubt I'm going to play. I've had some <laughs> conversations in the last 24 hours. The plan is for him to play. I don't see any other way. But for sure, the Lakers have to play for seven. You don't, you don't tank this idea of tanking for eight. I don't see the, uh, the Lakers do that. You, you play to win. There's too much to risk. And the other thing is, by playing Denver, this or if you do win and you do play Denver in that 2-7 matchup, you at least get them early in the playoffs. Last year, there's a lot of wear and tear on LeBron James. There's a lot of wear and tear throughout that roster. You get them early, you're going to have to play them anyway. Get that out of the way. Great and point. can you imagine the confidence they have moving forward if they knock off Denver in the first round? That opens up everything. I'm saying it's a, it's a, it's a what, long what stretch. What percentage are you giving that? That, this escalated fast. Less than three <laughs> percent. Less chance. than three percent. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't, I don't think they're. <laughs> okay. But again, anything could happen. It's it, the Lakers are a talented team. I'm just saying, if you, like, Sean just said too, they're gonna be healthy. They're gonna. It's early. If yeah. they can't happen to knock them off, and then they're going next, the next round and the next round, they're gonna have the most confidence, knowing they just beat the best team in the Western Conference. Obviously, we're getting way far ahead of ourselves. It was right a now. sweep last year, but there were a couple of games that were close last year against Denver. I, I mean, the Lakers can make a case that they're going to make this series more competitive. The Lakers are dangerous. You get the, no, no, no matter you like them, you hate them, they are dangerous. It's not going to be an easy series. I'm going to laugh if they don't even win this game tonight and we're sitting here. I they think, they I might not. Say, I think we're looking ahead a little a bit not. much. This is a mile-high mountain we're talking about <laughs> right now. they got to win Pelicans. tonight for us to even have All this I'm conversation. All I'm saying is, like, why fear the Nuggets? Why fear the, fear the Celtics? If you have goals and you have dream, like aspirations oh, of winning no, that go, conference. Go on, Whitney. What, uh, <laughs> I'm just what saying, else is there? If you have that, you're going to have to beat them eventually, so why not in the first round? If you have goals, right. you have to Stay positive, okay, Lakers. Keep going. You got um, this. Lou, does AD have to be the best player on the court for anything to happen? I don't think, I don't think so. I, I think LeBron James has been the best player on that team this year, and um, he's, been, he's been the leader. Anthony Davis has to be the best version of Anthony Davis. Now, does he have to put the pressure on himself? Is I have to go out there and outplay everybody on both teams? Absolutely not, but he has to be the second best player on the floor for them to be really successful, but I don't think he has to be the best. We got a, um, oh, were you gonna say something? No, I just heard Tom's phone go off. Thought something was happening. <laughs> Scrolling Instagram real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. AD had 30 points, 11 rebounds, and 33 minutes against New Orleans. That was on Sunday. Um, there's a two-leg parlay, you know I'm gonna do this, 25 mm -hmm. or more points and 12 or more rebounds, plus 137. <gasps> that dropped down already? Man, you should take it now. How are we <clears> feeling about it? I love that, and I have one little stat here that I love for this game. The Lakers rank second in the league in points in the paints at 56 points a game, and Anthony Davis has 16 of those points. Ooh. They don't really have a guy to guard him. Valanciunas is <clears throat> he's great big, but he's not as mobile to guard him. Herb Jones is too small, and Zion, I, I would assume, is going to start on him. He's going to make him have to work on both ends. So I think Anthony Davis does have to be the dominating force. I think you have to get him the ball. No matter who starts on him, especially if it's Zion, I think you try and get him in early foul trouble. But yeah, this, this is the key for Anthony Davis. He's got to get going early. And I do think he gets. But the you don't. Left. You don't feel like he has to be the best player, but he has to absolutely be dominant. He has to be forceful when and, he plays. Impose his will early. Get to the free throw line. Get on the offensive glass. He should be the most dominant player. And that, that stat with the points in the paint—that's huge because they can run. They can do. But when it slows down on the offensive glass, Anthony Davis has got to be dominant. Uh, Brandon Ingram, by the way, made his return with the knee injury thing on on Sunday. And he played 23 minutes. So is he full time? Go? No restriction? His, his minutes are going to go even higher, I think, tonight. I think he's going to be more of a full goal than not. To me, the biggest thing, though, with this Pelicans team is now that you're, re, you've reintegrated B.I., who I believe Lou Will played with. Yep. You reintegrate <laughs> him into the lineup. I'll play with everybody. That's true. Z Fair Zion enough. was so comfortable when Brandon Ingram was out with having the ball in his hands, playing that point forward role. <clears throat> I think for the Pelicans, the big question is always with this team, when Zion's healthy is, how do you blend these two guys? How do you make both of them fit next to each other and play at a high level? And tonight will be another example for them to try to figure that out. Chandler, I'm uh, hot right what, what? I'm just, it's this, really hot. This hoodie is so thick and warm. I'm just there's a lot going on. It's almost here. like you didn't know that it's always hot in here. Yeah, I'm sweating too. It makes everyone feel it's better. Hot. And I'm sure it does. Um, <laughs> 
Let's talk about ceiling for the Pelicans. There are certain teams that I think we just sort of assume that there is a very low ceiling. I, I don't know what you're putting over New Orleans here. I mean, contender seems like a stretch. Uh, I don't think they're real contenders. I loved this team early last year when we were talking about Willie Green, Coach of the Year, and they have all mm. these young assets with you know with Murray and or Murphy and Herb Jones and Alvarado, and then they have these stars. <laughs> when they're healthy, they're really, really good. And now, as of lately, C.J. McCollum has found his rhythm. He's gotten hot. Valanciunas, you know what you're going to get from him. You're going to get a solid double-double pretty much every single night with that guy. And then they have two elite players that can get out in transition. They can go get you a bucket and Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. So I think <laughs> they do have a lot of talent. They are on the right trajectory. I just don't think with the Western Conference being so deep this year, this is their year. But I, I wouldn't be – either way, this game could go either way tonight. They've had a great year. They're now with Brandon Ingram back too, that, that kind of gives uh -oh. another layer. If I had to pick, <laughs> I think that I'm going Lakers tonight. Though still, I think the, right, I think right. the Lakers okay, get cool. more. I think the Lakers get more calls. I think the NBA wants the Lakers. Whoa! To I think, I think the Lakers get it done tonight. I don't think the home court advantage is going to be too big of a deal. And you know what I was thinking too? This is the closest thing to like March Madness we got with LeBron. It feels like it's like the one game elimination. <laughs> Never played college basketball. This is his March Madness. This is I his like March it. Madness. Yeah, that's a good point. In April. In, 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 in April. April. Um, let's look at the odds. I know they're fluctuating back and forth, left and right. Pelicans right now are the favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah, minus one and a half right there, over under of 224 and a half. And the Lakers have won three of the four games that they've played against New Orleans. So let's just go, Lou. Who wins? Yeah, who you got? He got. It's going to be the Lakers. Like I, like I said, I, I'm one of those guys. I don't bet against LeBron James. I don't bet against Steph Curry when it comes down to it for the money. If it comes down to winning <laughs> a basketball game for the money, for to move on, to do anything special, those are two guys I, I've just learned to never bet against. So I, I got Lakers tonight. I agree. And, you know, we've never played in a play-in, but when you, if you, whoever loses this game, that pressure has got to be crazy on the next game. You know what I mean? Like, you had a chance of locking the seventh seed, and now you have the one game later, you're going home. So this is such a big game, and whoever it is is not going to have an easy game next round, whether it's going to be Sacramento or Golden State. You know what? Let's just, I'm going to say New Orleans, just to be uh, Let's contrary. mix it up. I mean, they yeah, look, look good lately. They look really bad. good I mean, against that's Sacramento. Not a, that's yeah. not a bad thing. I don't, know, I don't thing. know what it is, though, but, like, Lakers, Pelicans, they've had their number. They beat them in the in-season tournament, and they yeah. beat them on Sunday for the for the chance to this is play 7-8. I like True. to say this they're due. This, 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 this is for the this money. This really is. This is different. For everything. Yes, sir. Well, for to go get beat by the Nuggets, but, yeah, it's for everything. Yeah, sick reward. It's like a weird prize. Uh, Warriors Kings is the later game today. Uh, Warriors, God, it's deja vu. Warriors beat the Kings last year in Game Seven of that first round series. Um, it's a Game Seven type environment again tonight in Sacramento. Do we have confidence, Chandler, that the Kings can figure it out? Again, in this scenario, one game, sure, anything can happen. If I'm betting man, I'm betting Golden State Warriors tonight. They're just the big brother of the, the of the Kings. They've always had their number. I think the minute that Kevin Herter and Malik Monk went down for this team, that is a huge hole. Yeah. It's a huge void. I'd love to see Fox come out early tonight, make Steph Curry work on the defensive end. Sabonis dominate, although he has not played great against the Warriors. But... Those two guys have to take 20 plus shots tonight. Like this is this is it for them. They need this game. And again, because if you lose this game, then it gets real dicey in that next round. But but I, I like the Warriors. Oh, look at that. Kings going to sleep. This is what we wanted too. We wanted a chance Kings for the Lakers and wanted. the Warriors to That's, get seven eight. This You're is spoiled. this is no diss to the Sacramento Kings. I like the team that they've built. Again, it's two guys in the NBA that I don't bet against when it's for the money. Steph Curry. For the money, he's putting them to sleep. You like the Warriors more than the Lakers? Though? I like Steph Curry. Oh, okay, Ooh. that's a different like one. Are we looking you, ahead? I'm just saying, like, would you rather bet it Warriors tonight to win, or would you rather bet the Lakers tonight to win? If you could only If they pick played one? each other? No, that game or that game. Which one do you, what do you think is more of a lock? I think the Warriors game is more of a lock. Whoa! Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Warriors are more, why? Do we just trust them more? It just, listen, that, that, that Pelicans-Lakers game got a lot of star power in it. Got a lot of star power in it. New Orleans is playing really good basketball. I just think the Lakers are the type of team that they get methodical with how they go about games, with game planning, with strategy. LeBron James is going to go out there. He's going to manage the game. He's going to manage the pace. He's going to manage the flow. It's going to go his way. It's going to be uh, tilted his way. So I, I think the other game is going to be a little bit more of a lopsided one. And you know what's interesting? You were saying whoever wins that first game, like, congrats, you're, you're going to get the Denver Nuggets. Yep. It's the opposite on this. It's like, okay, if we can win this game and then go get the next game, we have a real shot at actually going and beating the Oklahoma City Thunder with a better draw. So totally this, different. this, yeah, it's almost like we said, Laker Nation.
she wants them to sit, that's not going to happen. But it is a more favorable matchup to get the eight seed in the West this year than the seventh. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you don't want to be great. It's a better position for these two teams almost to go and go balls to the wall and win these next two games and then get the thunder rather than rest. And since the Lakers cannot do that. No, I don't think they can either. Um, let's just take a, a road, a trip down memory lane because this seems like a bit of a rivalry building. Steph had 50 uh, in Game 7 of the series last year. And, of course, there was the Draymond stomp on Sabonis and his chest in Game 2. Uh -huh. Forgot Do you, about that. Does this have enough to be considered a rivalry? And I was in the building no. when Draymond came back in that one and he got a standing ovation, which is everything that's wrong with the world. But that being said, <laughs> Chandler. Uh, uh, I will say the Sacramento fan base is awesome. Yep. They're, they're going to be loud. They are going to be rowdy. They're going to try to light the beam tonight. And they are not going to let Draymond Green forget about that moment. Every time he touches the ball, they are going to boo him, and it's going to be a crazy atmosphere. They're so close in location, but the, the Warriors pack a different punch. They're like the Lakers. There's going to be so many Warrior fans also in there that love Steph Curry and love Klay Thompson. So as far as the drive to Sacramento from here? It's not, oh, from here? Oh, from, far. from yeah. here? Ooh, like Lou, seven? Lou's about pulling up. Seven uh, hours, maybe? I live a life. Oh, seven Eight? hours? I don't live that type of life. No, I know. <laughs> and a lot of it's just kind of boring, so you can just cruise. And also, anytime Draymond Green's on the floor, there's going to be some sort of Drama. physical, yeah, there's going to be some sort of environment that's going to, could possibly be hostile, especially when there's already I'm been I'm excited history. for these games, man. It's I think Lou really wants to go tonight to yep, the game. I'm, 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 we send him out I'm excited. It's been a long time since we've seen so many great matchups. Yeah. So many great matchups, making the greatest players in the world earn it. This is exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see these games. And think about the people that didn't like the plan initially. Like, if they didn't... LeBron. They, like LeBron. Like, <laughs> these two teams would LeBron already... Funny. said whoever created the play-in should get fired. Yep. These two Here teams would already just be home. They, <laughs> wouldn't, even, they, wouldn't, even have a, they wouldn't even have a chance at going to get the... Thunder. He hated like, the idea. No, it's, 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 it's perfect brilliant. entertainment. It's better than anything we could have asked for. And also, on the Sabonis thing, he's never had a triple-double against Draymond. So how do we get over the that hump? Do we get over that like hump? Like I said, he's got to be aggressive. He's got to do the same thing Anthony Davis. He's got to come out. It's, it's one game, and then you have to go to the next one. But he's got to dominate. And again, he's never played great again. Draymond Green's a great defender. Right. He's physical. He's mobile. He's one of those rare guys that can move his feet and stay with guards. And he can also be physical with a strong Sabonis like this. So I just think, like I said, it's got to be him and Fox, especially with those two wings out. They have to do the majority of the scoring. I Take 20 shots. Take 25 shots. It doesn't matter. You're going to live and die with those two guys tonight. This is going to be fantastic. Also, Draymond said it too, didn't he? He said he hates the playing game. But and then the he greatest also thing it. that's ever yeah, yeah. been created. That was actually a really good Draymond quote. Um, the if young you're in it, you love it. If you're you not in it, to. you're like, why is there the play-in tournament, right? Like, that's probably it's, what it's LeBron It's one of those thinking. things that's, irre that's not relevant to you until... You, you need it. it. You know, I think you love it if you're the one and two seed, too, because it gives you a couple more extra days of rest I after mean, the regular those season. those guys all have, it like, a week yeah, off. It works, it works for everybody. The Lakers made it to the Western Conference Finals out of the play-in tournament, right? Yeah. He made it to the NBA Finals yeah. out of the play-in tournament. So clearly there's something here that works. Especially when it's so deep and everyone, the 10th seed, what was their record this year? Like, Everyone's you know, above 500. Everyone above 500 and they're the 10th seed? Yeah. They deserve a crack at it. They got this right. Um, let's talk young dudes on the Warriors. They've been a huge part of what they what they have done on the court. What's the impact you've seen? I mean, a massive impact, and they're they're blending their vets and their youth better than they have ever under <laughs> Steve Kerr. And I think Jonathan Kaminga, Trace Jackson Davis, Brandon Pazemski, they love all three of those players. And Kaminga, we've seen develop into that second option on any given night. He he has qualities that makes him a star caliber player. Um, and he missed some time late in the season with a knee injury. Um, he's on his way back. He, he's looking better to close the year. They need him to step up tonight and for the rest of the playoffs. He's also extension eligible, Michelle. So oh. seeing how, he, how that goes in the summertime after his third mm -hmm. season will be interesting as well. That's exciting for everyone involved. Uh, look, I, I want to look ahead because I think this is the gazillion dollar question as well. If the Warriors lose this thing, is this the last time we see Clay, Steph, and Draymond playing together? I think so. <clears throat> I think so. I can see Clay. I think he's played well enough this year for, to go and get a huge bag from a team like the Orlando Magic or someone like that. Oh, that's so we're buying that, huh? a bunch. I am. I, and I think he deserves it. I think he's got one more crackhead to go and be the guy. And I think with everything that's happened going to say this year, if, for them to basically be the, t uh, the, the 10 seed and, and go and get knocked off by their little brother, the Sacramento Kings, <laughs> I, I think this would be their final game together. This, this big three, um, these three guys are a Hall of Fame group. Um, they've done a lot together. They've created memories. They were a championship group. I, w I love to see guys start and finish their careers mm -hmm. in one place that they've, they've done so many great things for. Something just feels like there's time for a change in, in 
uh, Golden State. It just feel, it just feels like it. You know, when you're around this game for so long, you can tell when the energy is shifting, and it feels like that's the that's the vibe um, going into this playoff run that we're probably seeing the, the last days of this three together. It's basically Clay's going to be gone. That makes me a little bit sad. Mm. That's why he's taking everybody on the boat. Um, Steph always shows up. That is not we're not worried about that. But is there a chance we get an old school Splash Brothers performance, which would mean, and here we go, uh, Steph and Clay both have to score 25 or more, which right now is at plus 389. With those odds, I would take it. I think <laughs> Steph definitely is going to go over 25. And Clay's had these games where again he, he can has. get hot early. He can make you know seven, eight, nine, ten threes. So at plus 389. I would definitely take this and little part. Clay, I like that one. Clay quietly got worked back into the starting lineup. We never discussed it. Yeah, the whole come off the bench thing was a blip on the screen. Um, yeah, and he's had a few of those. Are like 27 points seems to be his wheelhouse. Draymond, by the way, first player to record a double double without attempting a field goal or a free throw. That's the other crazy. Night. That is a weird stat. Um, so here we go. Eight <laughs> or more like, assists. That's. that's Magic. Yeah, that's that's almost as crazy as the Celtics not having a free throw. That that's game. also magic and weird. Hmm. Yeah, there's a couple weird moments in the, at the end crazy. of this one. Um, if he scores eight or more and eight rebounds, uh, assists and rebounds, plus 286. I like that. Yay? Yeah, look just at, look at just, Lou writing just, stuff down. He's gonna take <laughs> that one. What is he doing? I just <laughs> assists and rebounds. I like it. Just crazy as we were talking about a player who the points are the hardest thing for him to get. Yep. Like he's gonna get the rebounds. He's gonna get the assists, the swing swings. He's playing with the best shooters his, ever. His, his averages are kind of up this year though. Points. I'm just saying, if, if you told me, all right, or Draymond, eight, eight, and eight, which ones he not gonna get? I would <laughs> probably say points. Yeah. I think that would be okay. If he's on the floor for 30 plus minutes, he's getting eight assists and eight rebounds. He's the ball a lot. He's crash. He's crashing the glass. It's the points that are gonna be the tricky part. I, I, I buy that one as well. Um, Kings, I, we talked a little bit, Chandler, you mentioned the, the huge injuries, by the way, of the last month this season. Is there anything on Malik Monk that you can share? Malik Monk is going to be out well into April and May. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, I mean, he's not going to return uh, anywhere in this play-in tournament. Ever. Yeah, he's uh, out for the season. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're saying. Round. So, uh, I mean, the Kings are preparing to move forward here. If they do make it in the playoffs for at least the first round, through the first round without Malik Monk. That's just such a bummer. And but they do have guys to step up. They do have the you know Keegan Murray. They have Harrison Barnes. These Monk guys have so. stepped up. But yeah, Malik Monk provides just that spark, that energy, the outside shooting, everything. And, and it's going to take a collective effort. Uh, you know, Davion Mitchell, he's been better. He's been making some shots outside, but that's a big hole to replace. And then on top of that, Kevin Herter, your best shooter, he's mm. out too. Those are those are I think two tall tasks to that's, overcome. That's two big ones. Let's go ahead and predict this bad boy. The odds on uh, FanDuel Sportsbook right now have the Warriors. Uh, two and a half point favorites um, and they were split the series was split when the Kings won both their games it was by a single point which is interesting to me <clears throat> Lou who wins Golden State Golden State the beam uh, I'm sorry Sacramento I don't I don't feel like that beam is gonna be lit you know and you guys should be on edge and y'all should be there and be very supportive of your team you know this is the team that just took you out seven games the last time we were in this position so you know the proof is in the pudding right there I still like Golden State you seem yeah. sad when you're saying it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sad. Just it's going to be a great game. It's going to, but I can see even Golden State pulling away with this, you know, double digit. I think they're going to come out. You I know, know. Dang, double digit. I think double they're going to come out ready to play. And I think yeah. they, this is what we wanted, right? This is what Somebody everybody wanted. Yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings. I want to be entertained. I want to see a triple overtime thriller. I wouldn't I mind the that. Warriors and the wouldn't Warriors win pretty big. Especially we're on the West Coast, watching sports so much easier out here. Yeah, I'd take a triple over time. Don't mind it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, legend, legend, Bernie Williams. Oh, hello, class, Bernie. Class, and class. classy. Uh, when we come back, when Run It Back returns. Run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back. I mean, this next guest, it's an honor. A four-time World Series champion, a five-time All-Star, and a four-time Gold Glove winner also can rock the guitar, and the first guest to wear a suit and tie on this here show. Bernie Williams, ladies legend. and gentlemen. Legend. Yep, legend. This is, legend. He's the first person Thank to get you. a clap Thank from you. us as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's something about the memo, you know, the dress code or whatever, but. <laughs> Never in doubt. It's always better to be overdressed. Overdressed. That is that is the motto. That's the way it goes. All right, we're going to talk, because um, the Knicks right now are doing really well, but we want to kind of do a, a little memory here. Um, you guys were at the peak. The Knicks in the mid-'90s were the most fun. In my mind, I have this image that Yankees and Knicks players all hung out, partied together, did kind of fun things. Is this true? 
Uh, part of it is. Part of it I is. I think, okay. you know, part of it is. Uh, then there's a lot of things that I may not be allowed to say in public. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I do remember those snakes. I mean, there were... They were hardcore, man. They were bruisers. They were, you know, they will, they will run through you, you know. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Harper and uh, uh, you know Patrick, you know, all those guys. You know, we were hanging out, uh, you know, back in those days, and uh, you were, it seems like we were the toast of the town. So it's a great memories. What a great time. Bernie, there were some legendary Knicks games at the Garden around that time. Obviously, Reggie Miller, eight points in nine seconds. <laughs> uh, the Knicks Heat fighting in the 97 playoffs. Were you there for any of those iconic moments? What were your favorite memories? No, I, I mean, I was not there for a lot of those games. You know, I used to, you know, kind of run uh, into them, you know, in, in the city and you know, in various events and uh, charity events and restaurants and, uh, you know, Broadway shows. And uh, we were kind of like, you know, going into the same places. And I was so, uh, you know, I, I thought I was a tall guy, but looking <laughs> over those guys, you know, that made me feel so small. But uh, yeah, that, I mean, we had great camaraderie and uh, we uh, knew that as uh, team players in this great city, you know, we had great expectations and uh, it was just a great time to be alive and be part of the, uh, you know, the, the sports fabric of, of the city. I mean, when New York sports are, are crushing it, there's no better place. Grammy nominated guitarist. You also played the anthem at the Garden a few times. What is more stressful? Because I would think baseball for you is second nature. Uh, do you get stressed when you're doing this right here? Oh, yes. <laughs> there is a lot of stress there. I mean, I, I usually compare it with, you know, having to, you know, like nail two free shots. You know, there's no time left. The game is on the line. You know, you've done it a million times, but there's that time and place, you know, where the, you know, everything comes together and you have to perform and there's no second chance, you know, you just got to do it or do it, sink or swim. And, uh, you know, that's what I feel, you know, when I play the anthem. But uh, you, you feed off of the energy of the people and, and you have, you know, this one chance to make it right. And once you, once you hit that last note, man, you're like, oh, Woo, all right, <laughs> it's, all, it's great. That's I awesome. mean, I know James Dolan fancies himself a musician. He's got the band. He does all that. Does he bug you for tips and, and how to, to be better? No, I think he has a great group of musicians that he draws upon, you know, to do that. I'm actually dying to play with him one time and kind of sit in in that band. And that, I, I think that will be a lot of fun. Bernie, who is the greatest guitar player of all time, in your opinion? Oh, my. Man, that, that's such an unfair question to ask. It depends, it depends on the genre, the type of music, like the you know, type of music that you listen to. I mean, if it's blues, you have you know a thousand players that play blues, classical music, and rock. You know, uh, mentioning names, I mean, will be you know, some of my favorites. I mean, I, I would probably go with George Benson. You know, maybe Pat Metheny, BB King. Eric Clapton, and then Andres Segovia, they're all over the place. You know, it's one instrument, but uh, he has such a, a great cultural, you know, rapport. You know, all cultures, you know, all countries have a great guitar player. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think the key is just try to keep your, keep your ears open, you know, for new music and always, you know, try to appreciate, you know, the, uh, you know, the art and, and all these great musicians and not, not try to, you know, pigeonhole yourself, you know, just to one genre of music. That's awesome. Can you imagine being able to do both, being a rock star yeah. and well, a rock star like guitar everything. player? Uh, you and Carmelo Anthony actually go way back, Bernie. How did you guys meet, and are you guys like still close? How did that transpire? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was so fortunate to be part of his effort uh, to uh, bring a lot of uh, joy you know, uh, to Puerto Rico, and I went actually in two Two or three of those trips, you know, he would, you know, refurbish a uh, basketball court in San Juan, and uh, he did, you know, various events, you know, uh, fundraising for, you know, a lot of the uh, 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 youth uh, charities in Puerto Rico. And uh, we were, you know, he just recruited a whole bunch of us, and uh, we were so glad to be part of that effort. And uh, uh, you know, kudos to him. I mean, he. Uh, he's one of those guys that never uh, forgot where he came from, and he just came back and uh, made uh, trying to make a, a huge impact in the community that he came from. So uh, that that was just a great thing to be a part of. <clears throat> so are the Knicks gonna should they retire his number seven, or what are we thinking on that? 
absolutely, man. I mean, he was, he was part of the city. I mean, he he gave New York a lot of joy. You know, you know, nailing all of those three pointers and doing you know doing that. And uh, uh, he raised the roof a, a whole lot of times. You know, he was uh, part of those uh, great teams, and uh, and and he played hard for the city. I think he, uh, you know, he he definitely deserves it. So on some of those legendary Yankee teams you played on, did you have any teammates that were hoopers? Which one of your teammates do you think would have the most success in the NBA? I don't know. I probably would. I do hear rumors about, you know, before games, you know, usually on the road, you know, we had like Paul O'Neill and Gerald Williams, you know, sometimes <laughs> Derek would like sneak in and they go on a court and uh, have their warm-ups and uh, kind of shoot some uh, – uh, hoops there. So, uh, yeah, those guys, I mean, Gerald Williams was probably one of the best athletes that I've ever seen. And, uh, and Paul, you know, uh, oh, those guys, nice. you know, really worked hard on and off the field. And that was part of their condition. And I think it was, uh, it was great. You know, the, the fact that they, you know, kind of introduced another sport, you know, into their preparation to get ready for a major league baseball game. So I thought that was awesome. We always talk about that. We were Here talking we with football players. Can we score a touchdown? Can they score a bucket? If a, one of a professional athlete, like Lou Will, say he played oh, you know, varsity. No. Well, it's you. It's, this is their. Okay, me. <laughs> yeah. Like I, like I made varsity baseball as a freshman in high school, JV basketball. Wasn't never very good. Never played college. <laughs> haven't played since. If I got 500 at bats oh in the MLB, Bernie, would I? Could I get lucky and get one hit or no chance? Because now I play golf and the ball doesn't move and I can barely hit the thing. I so I can't Look imagine hitting a 90 mile an hour slide. 90? They're throwing it like. A yeah, ball. I mean, I, I think you could probably be, you know, you run into one, you know, once in a while and make some <laughs> contact, you know, just right. by sheer luck, you know, 500 at bats. I mean, chances are you're definitely going to run into one, make contact, you know, maybe just foul it off, you know. Hit a little blooper here and there. And those, I mean, that, they just count as a hit, you know. Back in, you know, the next day, that was a line drive. You know, it doesn't matter how it, how it felt. I had to, uh, but yeah, having that hand-eye coordination, I think that so many athletes that were uh, so great in, in so many sports, uh, but you know, this whole niche of, of being able to hit a, you know, a fastball, you know, 90, 100 miles an hour, and then hit a changeup and hit a forkball and something like that, I, I think is uh, one of those things that you're kind of born with. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you kind of, you know, enhance uh, your your ability to play the game as you get older. But uh, uh, it's, you know, it's it's definitely an acquired thing that you have to work hard, you know, uh, most of your life to be able to, you know, you see that the, that 10,000 hour uh, thing that you got to spend, you know, to be a master of your craft, you know, is definitely holds true in uh, baseball and uh, trying to hit a baseball. I honestly think that would be harder than no, scoring. In I, the NBA. I was, I was going to say, I, I had the pleasure of doing batting practice with the Phillies uh, once yeah. and their hitting coach, he started, he put the ball on the tee and I was like, come on, man. He was <laughs> like, no, I have to show you the correct way to hit a baseball, okay. how to line your hips up and everything. He was telling me you basically had to start swinging before the ball even comes out. So it was a, yeah. it was a, yeah, it was a surreal <laughs> you experience. You got to guess. You go. Yeah, you got to guess. So 500 right. at bats, we would get lucky and make contact <laughs> on, on maybe one, because I hit one finally once it came out the machine after we got off the tee. That's and fun. when I tell you, my, my arms were ringing, my hands <laughs> were ringing. It's a completely different thing that you're training for. So I, I, I got some mad hmm. respect for you guys and, and what you're able to do at a high level. I want to ask. Um, the NBA has some great owners. Um, I played for one in Steve Ballmer. Um, you played for George Steinbrenner. What was it like playing for such a, a, a legendary owner and, and Mr. Steinbrenner? And uh, what, what are some of the pros and cons of, of working with someone like that? Well, I mean, I, I, I didn't see a lot of cons, you know, playing for Mr. Steinbrenner. I think that he really uh, spent a lot of time, effort, and resources trying to provide the team with the best of everything. Uh, you know, the trick part of it is that he will definitely would see, try to see some return on his investment. <laughs> so uh, he'll demand that excellence. And I think, you know, if uh, like in my case in particular, I wanted to be perfect, you know, in my pursuit of perfection, I kind of stumble about, stumble about excellence, you know, somewhere along the way. So we had a lot of great expectations as a team and individuals, you know, trying to get uh, to a point that we could be the best players individually and then, then try to get the sum of the parts to work and that trying to click uh, to have some chemistry as a team. And uh, I think George was the best in trying to provide us with the best resources to be in a position to be successful. So I cannot knock him for that. You know, he always wanted to win. 
Uh, and that was first and foremost, you know, he didn't want us to have a good regular season, even a good playoff. He was the World Series or bust. And every year that we won, you know, the next day, literally the next day, we would just go, okay, what's going to happen next year? You know, who are we going to be, you know, and and uh, trying to make preparations right after we won the uh, the World Series, you know, there's no time to, you know, bask in the glory or, you know, uh, kind of enjoy a little bit of that. It was all about next year, the next at bat, you know, the next uh, season. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that relentlessness, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, it, it was just uh, permeated through the whole organization and uh, created uh, this culture that we were so proud of, uh, you know, be a part of. And uh, that great run, you know, from the uh, mid to late 90s and early 2000s, you know, it's uh, some of the best times in the city, you know, when, you know, when it came down to baseball and the Yankees. It's my, one of my favorite things is there's a group of people out there who've just watched Seinfeld reruns, and so their only knowledge of George Steinbrenner is just the back of the head and George Costanza. And you and Jeter were <laughs> were on an episode together. Uh, what was that experience like? Did you have a script? I know you had a line. Was it scripted? Did they do an, a lot of ad lib? What do you remember? It was about a it? scripted line. Yep. That was my three and a half. Well, actually, 15 seconds of fame on a sitcom. <laughs> uh, he was. I mean, the whole experience was just out of this world. You know, it was right after we won the 96 uh, series against the Braves. You know, we, me and Derek had an invitation to go to uh, Hollywood to film an episode of Seinfeld. I mean, that was a total no-brainer. We stayed at the Beverly uh, Hills Hotel. Uh, we got into the NBC studios, where they have transformed the parking lot into a batting cage. Wow. Uh, we had Jason Alexander there trying to teach us how to hit. Uh, and, you know, it was it was just an incredible experience, and uh, uh, you know, it's part of you know the spoils of being a champion you know, in, uh, uh, in those days. Uh, and uh, you know, obviously, Seinfeld was uh, such a great show. Uh, just to be a part of that, you know, it was just surreal and uh, awesome, and uh, everything, everything in, in, in just that moment in time. That's awesome. That's so good, Bernie. Baby. Your former teammate Alex Rodriguez is part of a group trying to buy the Timberwolves still. What kind of owner do you believe A-Rod would be? I think he'll be a good owner. I think, you know, he'll, uh, you know, with his experience, you know, playing for several teams over his career uh, and uh, his acumen, you know, financial, uh, whatever you may want to call it, I think he has the right combination of, uh, of things, you know, to, uh, uh, to, you know, to, to be a good owner. Uh, I think, you know, knowing the players, knowing what it takes to be a champion, uh, knowing the preparation that it takes, you know, for players to be at the best of their game, you know, because he went through it. I think it's a great uh, element and a great uh, variable to add into the whole mix. I mean, a lot of these uh, people that uh, run, you know, the team from the administration standpoint, uh, you know, have maybe limited or known uh, non-experience, you know, playing, you know, the sport itself. Uh, so it might be hard for them to relate, you know, to an athlete or, or, or some sort of situation. And I think he's uh, going to be in a better position to answer those questions and uh, contribute to the, you know, to that club. So I think he'll be a great owner. And, uh, you know, he's, he definitely has a flair for, uh, you know, being in, in the public eye and, uh, and, uh, and uh, being, the, you know, uh, the center of attention in, in, in many instances. So, you know, knowing, uh, you know, what it takes to be in front of a camera and, you uh, and uh, being able to say the right things at the right time, you know, it's also going to be a, a good thing for him uh, uh, being a, an owner. So I think he's going to be great. Yeah, he's always seems to be in the media and in the public eye, like you said. And he, for whatever reason, always gets a lot of hate. What was your experience <laughs> like playing with A-Rod? He was a great teammate. You know, he was an awesome teammate. He prepared himself to the best of his ability. Uh, he was all about no, you know, his knowledge of the game. Uh, the fact that he, you know, wanted to be as part of uh, the winning tradition of the, the New York Yankees as anybody on the team. I mean, he had a great 2009, you know, World Series. You know, uh, he was, you know, part of the fabric of the city. Uh, he enjoyed play, playing in New York, and uh, uh, he did the best, you know, to try to be the best player, you know, at this time, uh, at the time that he was playing with us. So uh, I have nothing to say about A-Rod, and he was, he was awesome, and, uh, you know, numbers prove it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I had a great time playing with him and, and him being my teammate. Honestly, you need you also need that guy. You need sort of the quote unquote villain, the drama. It's just it's fun. It's fun for what we do for a living, Bernie, selfishly. Um, we got we're, yeah. I know, it's, it's the it's the best. A-Rod, Jeter, do they like each other? Do they hate each other. Now we see them all as adults, like working together. Yeah, it's, now they're all the weird. time together. I know. 
I kind of under it. the bridge, and I think it was part of the the whole situation that happened there. And uh, I think it was good, you know, good for the fans. I think it gave them something to talk about every day. And I think you know the uh, you know the the main thing was that they were you know teammates, you know, on a uh, on a on a. A uh, main goal and a common goal to which was to win a championship, and uh, they they were able to accomplish that as well. Before we let you go, Bernie, why don't you tell us a little bit about Tune Into Lung Health? What is that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for letting me talk about that. It's a, it's an initiative that was uh, uh, designed to uh, uh, help people uh, cope with uh, the anxiety and all that that has to uh, do with dealing with interstitial lung diseases. And my connection with that is because my father died from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is one of these interstitial lung diseases in 2001. And now uh, we had a hard time, such a hard time diagnosing uh, his condition. Uh, so we really want uh, uh, nobody to go through what my family went through. So tune into lunghealth.com uh, is the website. We have a lot of resources, educational, uh, music, you know, curated by, you know, my, myself and, and others, uh, music from uh, uh, Stevie Wonder to the oh. Beatles to Frank Sinatra, vo uh, vocalist uh, exercises uh, and breathing exercises to, uh, you know, enhance the quality of life that people that are suffering from uh, interstitial lung disease. So thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to talk about that. It's, I think it's a really important subject. No, thanks for sharing that info with us. Everyone check that out. <laughs> Bernie Williams, this has been an absolute pleasure. We appreciate the time. Thank you so much, guys. God bless. We'll be back. Thanks, man. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Chump scoops. All right, what do you got for us? Team USA, we've been talking about it all year, and we had seven of the 12 participants uh, about a month ago when we reported Drew Holiday, Devin Booker, mm. two commitments for Team USA, and they've finalized 11 of their 12-man <laughs> rosters. So the new four players, Anthony Edwards, Bam Adebayo, Tyrese Halliburton, and Anthony Davis, that leaves mm. one spot open. I'm told this is Kawhi Leonard's spot. This vacant spot is Kawhi Leonard. If he's healthy, if he wants to play at Team USA, he's someone that LeBron James and Kevin Durant uh, <laughs> want to see at Team USA and want to see play. But if he can't, Paolo Bancaro, Paul George, Jalen Brunson, all under consideration for that open spot. I'm told as of right now, not Kyrie Irving or De'Aaron Fox in play for that spot. But listen, Tyrese Halliburton's roster spot, the, the spot that he got, that was really the, the position where you looked at a guy like De'Aaron Fox uh, you know, defensive-minded guard, a slasher, athletic, or a guy like Kyrie Irving, who we've seen play in the past, yeah. a gold medalist in the past. Obviously, this year has had a resurgent season for the Mavericks, who are contending. So that was the big position that still, even after this announcement, after this news that, that I put out there, um, is still, you know, a, a little bit of a debate around the league as far as why Tyrese Halliburton over those two guys. But that's a decision USA Basketball made. Yeah, who got <laughs> snubbed? Uh, Kyrie Irving. I think he's That's done it before. He's a gold medal. He's played with great players. He's played with LeBron. He plays with Luka now. He knows how to coexist on a situation like this. And he's had, like Sean just said, he's had an unbelievable year. He deserves a spot. Jalen Brunson is a guy you got to look at. Mm -hmm. I, I love the Kawhi Leonard having the, you know, a little bit more versatility, having small ball lineups. But listen, this is a great product. This is what Team USA needs to do. This is a gold medal roster. This is one of the best rosters we've ever had. This is a great, great team. So it is, obviously, it's always gold or bust for us. But... <laughs> This team is phenomenal, and, and we're winning the gold medal. Is there a cutoff when Kawhi has to? Is it just physical? Well, training or? camp starts in July, okay, so, so I think they're going to give it as long as they possibly can. Kawhi Leonard is the guy that they want on this team. They're trying to form whatever you want to call it, the Avengers, Dream Team <laughs> 2.0. They're trying to bring all the best players, and I think LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephen <laughs> Curry, when they spoke last summer when the, when the World Cup was going on, they talked about, we want to go all play, we want to have all the Hall of Famers play, and we want to kick everyone's ass by 40 or 50 ass, points. Uh, that's can't. not my place no, here. Uh, I want them I'll, leave, I'll leave that to you guys. I'm not here with a suit on, but I'm not. You can I'm say not, ace. Uh, oh uh, but, but what gosh. I will say is, is, is that's what those three guys talked about last summer, and they want Kawhi Leonard on this team to bring it to fruition. Shams, can you just say ace? Mm -mm. Why? Nope. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, shoe deal shops. What's going on here? Why won't you do it? <laughs> Fine. That I'll Veronica just hijack the, that Veronica Vaughn. <laughs> okay, uh, we got Pistons news. Yep, I said it. <laughs> it's happening. We, it's weird to have Pistons news, right? Yes. So, 
2020, they, they, they brought Troy Weaver in as the general manager. The Detroit Pistons, from what I'm told, they are hiring a new head of basketball operations, a president of basketball operations. The search process starts this week. Oh. Obviously disappointing season. 14 and 68. This is a team that hired Monty Williams, paid him a contract up to $100 million. Yeah. They expected to compete in the playoffs. They fell way short of that. Yeah. And they had the record for most losses in a row in NBA history. Um, they will hire a new head of basketball operations. That president will decide on the future of Troy Weaver and potentially Monty Williams. Uh, targets, I would expect two big name targets. They're not on, they're not available right now, but John Horse, general manager in Milwaukee, and Tim Connolly, the president of Minnesota. Really? He, I reported if last he can week. turn this if team he around. He has an opt that. out. He has an opt out <laughs> in his contract with the Timberwolves in the offseason. He turned the Nuggets into a championship contender. He turned the Timberwolves into a championship contender. I, if that's a, yeah, that's he a turned Detroit. Detroit. You can't pay that's Monty water into wine. You pay Monty Williams, you pay Connolly. Pay the players and get good players to win the games on this team. They need talent. They're just hiring More than people. they need staff. Chandler did call this uh, four months ago. That's true. Well, it wasn't that hard He is a genius. A lot of people <laughs> say that. How about Chandler for president right. of hey, – Please. Uh, not a mountain of money in the world to get me to move to Detroit. No <laughs> and <offense>. there it <laughs> is. Uh, we'll take a quick break when we go back to wrap things up on Run It Back. We had to insult at least one town today. Yeah, that's right. We hadn't done it yet. <laughs> run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't got... even flick up with me. This is crazy. Dude, Sean's gonna oh, get a was, new baby. This on that was one. awesome, by the way. Oh, Ooh, by baby. the way, he hit That's with impressive at the rim. That's two, nice. Those oh, are two my. jumper nice. shot fakes at the rim. That's nice. And then with the hand, right, little drop off. So I like it. I like that hero. No, look at this. I like look that. I like that. I'm here. That's fire. Look at this. No, I'm not. Got him. Oh, you too. Take that. Here, get dunked on now. That's nice. I like it. Do you love it? And it's just Dick in the like, paint there. Ooh. Excuse me? Grady Dick is in the oh, paint. Oh, right. Yeah, good call. Uh, Javante Green. <laughs> Shout out Javante Green. He Shout had some out. big games late in the season. How come some guys wear shirts under their jerseys? I think you have to have some sort of like shoulder, shoulder situation. It's a, uh, oh, it's where, like, to get, yeah. yeah, it's got pads and everything. I did that in college just because I was scrawny. I literally wore like a like a oh, like we a, saw like a Hanes <laughs> t-shirt under You look like a giant head. That's <laughs> yeah. all you look like. <laughs> Uh, this was nice. Oh, yeah. oh what? Not Scoop. on Jeff Green. This was nice. I thought Lose. he was dunking on Jeff Green. Lose this. rookie. Lose. Lose. I thought you decided you were doing it. rookie of the year. How'd that <laughs> pan out? <laughs> you know what? It would have been cool, uh, though, Lou. We'll be back next year. Would, yeah. We'll be back, we'll be back next year. Most improved next year. Most improved next year. There you go. Okay. Mm. Olivier Moxin's Prosper. Oh, my. Who? This kind of went under the radar. Like All of these against the Pistons? You know what, Sean Sue, James Wiseman had a little bit of a year this All year. All of these clips are against flashes, the Pistons, You just bro. wouldn't know, because, you know. Got his, yeah. Another shirt. <clears throat> Interesting. A lot of shoulder injuries here. A lot here. of shoulder injuries. Oh, they're dunking and falling like that. It's a nice dunk. Went under the radar for sure. Is this true? We have Mark Cuban on the show tomorrow? Oh, boy. Whoa. You better come in with some let's get hard it. No, 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 let's questions. keep it PG. Keep it PG Y'all. tomorrow. No, let's no, get no. it. Are we got to talk about the taxes. That's what I want to talk taxes. about. Taxes. Yeah. What are they? We hate them. Oh, that was yesterday, wasn't it? We're talking taxes. And Paul Shear's back? back? Oh, man. Tomorrow's going to be a quite the fun. We got Q's and Paul Shear tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, wow. We got a big day. Run it back, run it up. Run it back, run it back. Run it up. Run it back, yeah, yeah.